not running this world. Some people think God is running the world. He's not running the world. He gave the world to us to run. That is the cosmos. He gave it to us. But then we determine what the aeons will be. And we make the aeons of our lives consistent with God's revelation. Hey, go back to what I told you the aeon is. Read it again as it affects you. What is the aeon? Read it again. The structure and administration of your life. Right? Go on. Read from there. Yeah. How things go with you. This is really your aeon. See, the cause of your life. This is your word. When we say, you, you have your word. And I have my word. That's what we mean. How things go with you. Those who come in and out of your word. Those who will be in contact with you. Who your friends will be. Who your adversaries will be. What kind of challenges you will face in life. What kind of economic situation you will face in your time. And how you will respond. And how you will fare. How things will go with you and your, your children. And your environment. How this will be with your life. Whether you succeed or you fail. This is your aeon. This is your word. When you go back into Genesis, the Bible tells us, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. You see, that suggests a chaotic mass. It was in darkness, it was formless. That means there was no beauty. Then it says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's Genesis chapter 1. I have just given you verses 1 and 2. Then you come into that third verse and God said, God said, let there be light. The Hebrew says, light be. And light became there was darkness there was no beauty it was formless it was empty God said he said let there be light light became God spoke into his world that had darkness in it because he was the only one who could do something about it and he did and after he had done that, before ever, he said, let us make man. See, he uh, beautified the world before he put man there. Hallelujah. Now you got your word. So he says, through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. The aeons were framed or restored. Now, let's use the word frame to begin with. It means that God put out there the skeletal structure. He didn't fit in everything there. It's up to you what you're going to do with it. But it gives you an idea what it's supposed to be. Because you can see the frame. If you see the frame of a car, you won't confuse it for a house, even though you could choose to make it a house. And live in it. You see that? So, God, the Bible says, through faith, we understand that the aeons were framed. How things should be in those years coming. How things should go in those years coming. For example, God spoke to Abraham and told him about his future. He framed Abraham's aeon. It was up to Abraham now, having been given the frame. You get it? Having been given the frame to walk in the light of it and to build a life that he should build with the frame that God had given to him. 
And Abraham lived in the aeon that God gave to him. Isaac entered into it. So did Jacob. And when Jacob was dying, the Bible says he called his children together and prophesied into their future. He said, let me tell you what will happen to you in the latter days. He was dying. And he prophesied on each one of them and told them about their future. In other words, the frame of their aeon had been delivered to them. Now, if anything changed, for example, when Abraham, he had, God actually asked him to go in this direction and for a while he delayed and went the wrong direction. You know, that's a long story. But he had a problem, you remember, um, first he met the, the king Abimelech and then uh, he also had a problem with the king of Egypt and both of them did something similar. They wanted his beautiful wife. She was so beautiful, though she was past 60. Praise God. And when his wife was taken, this seemed to be different from what his aeon should be. This was not consistent with his aeon. Are you following this? This wasn't what God said. His wife was supposed to give birth to a seed through whom God was going to bless the world. This was the promise. And now his wife had been taken. So uh, how is this going to work? That was not the only problem he had. He was working with his, moving with his nephew. And one time, they, their servants began to fight. His nephew was Lot. And so, with all the blessings that God has spoken into his life, he said to Lot, it's not good for our servants to be fighting. Why don't we make a choice? You go this way and I go the other way, or you go this way and I go the other way. You choose first. The whole land is before us. Which one do you want? Lot looked and he saw the greener land and this other side was dry. He said, I'll take this green side. And Abraham said, it's all right. And Lot took the fertile land into the land of Sodom. There was trouble there. He didn't know. Now, the dry land was left for Abraham. Was this consistent with his aeon? He was supposed to be prospering. Now he's been given the dry land. Listen, through faith, we understand that the aeons were restored. Katatizo. It means to mend. It means to fix. It means to repair. It means to restore. It doesn't matter what has happened in your aeon. He says, through faith we understand that the aeons were karatizo by the rhema of God. He says, such that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, they came... Let me give you that scripture. Turn to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Are you there? Let's read verse 17. Notice what it says and what it doesn't say. Are you ready? Verse 17. All right, let's go. One, two. Stop. As it is written, I have made, he's talking about Abraham here, and, and, and how God ministered to him. God said to him, <laughs> like this, at the time, he had no child. God said, I have made you a father of many nations. I have made you, not I will make you. 
When I remember his promise, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promise, I shout hallelujah. I shout hallelujah. I shout. And they still suffer. Because, can I just inject this? Christianity is, oh Lord Jesus, can they get this? In Christianity, we are not being given promises. Christianity is the fulfillment of God's promises. Don't you forget this. If you study the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, where it talks a lot about faith and the, uh, the men and women of God that demonstrated extraordinary faith, he says something to us. He says, with all of what they achieved, they were not perfected. Because God couldn't perfect them without us. We had to come in because they were not in the church age. Jesus had not consummated salvation. And when he did, by the resurrection from the dead, the promises were fulfilled. And so we were born as the heirs of the promises. So we are the fulfillment of those promises that were made to the fathers. Come on. If you didn't get that, I, I don't know what is it now. Now you're looking at me like this. <laughs> See, if you can understand this, you understand my soonnesses in Christ. Are you following this? You get my understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? And then you can understand why we live differently. Why some Christians may not quite accept what we say because they remember his promises and shout hallelujah. But I am living out his promise. That's the difference. You see that? That's the difference. They believe God promised them prosperity. I live out prosperity. That's the difference. So my prayer life is different from their prayer life. You see that? No, no, no. Jesus has come. Jesus has died. Jesus has risen. Jesus has ascended. Jesus is seated. What are you still asking for? What do you want him to do? He's done. That's why he said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, take advantage of it. So my prayer, I, I, I can't lack anything. I don't lack anything. I can't want anything. I don't know what is it. Because, see, in the name of Jesus, that's mine. Praise God. I got it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's the way. See, at any point where I require something, it's, I don't ask for it. Glory to God. It's on my course. It's on my course. It's in my aeon. So when I get there, it's available to me. If I don't see it, I ask it to show up in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Show up. No. You that you're asking for a child. Is, are you supposed to have children in your aeon? And don't, don't give me the answer. It's just a question for your own heart. It's a question for your heart. Now you, you, you're asking for a job at mobile. Is that consistent with the Aeon? Have you seen the frame? Is that consistent with it? If it is not consistent with it, leave it alone. But if it is, we'll get there. All right? I'll tell you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'll never be broke in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So there, he said, um, as it is written, yeah, you're reading the 17th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. Can we go on now? Yeah? 
a father of many nations have I made thee uh-huh before him whom he believed aha uh -huh. even God now follow the, the next line even God uh-huh who quicken it that means who makes alive the dead that means God's a miracle worker he makes alive the dead that means nothing is ever too late he makes alive the dead glory to God and then the next line and what he calls things that don't exist as though they're history he calls things that don't exist as though they're history now the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 when you read from verse 1 be ye therefore imitators of God as beloved children imitators copy him copy him now he says God raises the dead God raises the dead see when you want to do something and you just want only the voice of the Spirit and you want to drown fear and doubt and unbelief you speak in other tongues because when you speak in tongues you activate your spirit and then your mind you know has no understanding of what's going on so you speak the accurate word the rhema oh thank you Lord Jesus see it pays to know the Word of God people what, what God say my people perish for the lack of knowledge not the lack of power not the lack of power like they say a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian it's not true there is no powerless Christian even a prayerless Christian is not powerless do you understand what I'm talking about because the power does not come through prayer there are two kinds of power one is ability the other one is authority for the ability it is in your spirit through the Word of God it doesn't come through prayer I pray I must pray I cannot but pray without praying I won't be standing here I prayed for a long while before coming here I've got to pray but why do I pray not to get God to do something it is so that I can align with God's direction and will and purpose for my life and be attuned to him not to get him to do something I've got to get in line prayer helps us get our spirit to be conditioned to his thinking you see that so prayer to that extent is very very important including fasting that's important but you see prayer doesn't bring power so but you know if you if you're not prayerful and you hear that kind of thing a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian you see it's true that is one of the ways that Satan robs many Christians of their effectiveness to rebuke the devil to cast out the devil to rule over Satan you don't need anything but the knowledge of God's Word faith in your heart in God's Word and the knowledge that you are a child of God he said in my name shall they cast out devils in my name that's all hallelujah you getting it all right okay now he says that God calls things that be not as though they were as though they're history now I said if you read in the vision chapter 5 from verse 1 he says for us to imitate God he says be ye therefore imitators of God as beloved children do you know what that means he says copy God as children who are uh, um, fond of their father and their father is fond of them beloved children they run around with the father they run around with daddy so they copy daddy what the way daddy talks the way daddy moves the way that he does what he does they just like daddy and they act like daddy that's what he says we should do so we are to call things that don't exist as though they were he said Abraham now the man was Abraham exalted assumed father that was his name he was assumed to be a father and then he had no child now God said now your name shall no longer be Abraham assumed father but Abraham because I have made you a father of many nations now if God didn't make him a father of many nations he could have never been a father of many nations but when God makes something listen he calls them by their names 
Oh. Let's look at this. The whole earth was in darkness in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Covered in darkness. So there was no light. And God said, light be. What's light? You see, he creates by his names. What he calls them, they become. See that? What he calls them, they become. What has God called you? When he changed the man's name to Abraham, father of many, well, some people might have laughed at it because he had no chance. Say, huh? That man has done a naming ceremony. Now he's calling himself father of many and doesn't even have a child. Anybody can talk, you know that. I say, oh, Abraham, old man. Now he says he's father of many. Everybody you hear about that in the neighborhood and laugh and laugh until the child was born and the name was significant because it revealed what had been happening. When God said to Sarah, you're going to have a son, the Bible says Sarah laughed. And God said, Sarah, why did you laugh? Ah, she said, I didn't laugh. God said, but you laughed. He said, but you laughed. I love God. You know, sometimes somebody tells a little lie around us. We want to kill him. God didn't say, ah, I said you laughed. You said you did it. God said, but you laughed. Nevertheless, it will happen. Then she stopped laughing. Now imagine now she comes out and says, my name is Princess Sarah. My husband's name is father of many. No, we knew you are Sarai and Abram. No, 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 no. That's not our name anymore. We are, I am Princess and she is the father of many. Where are the children? They are inside us. <laughs> and she too laughed. He said, I laughed at the beginning. I'm still laughing. Until she became big. He said, have you heard? Have you seen her? An old woman. She, she really looks pregnant. I said, she's sick. She's sick. It's a tumor. <laughs> Until the baby was born. And what did she call the baby? Isaac. It means laughter. <laughs> then she said, God has caused me to laugh. And those who hear this will laugh with me. They will laugh with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're going to find Isaac in your finances. You're going to find Isaac in your family. You're going to find Isaac in your home. Can you shout amen somebody? Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Through faith we understand. 